Next week, we'll be celebrating the holiday of Purim. The sages tell us that at the time of the Purim events, our bitter enemy Haman was casting lots in order to choose a date on which to annihilate the Jewish people. He was very happy when the lots fell out on a date in the Jewish month of Adar because Haman somehow knew that the greatest of Jewish leaders, Moses, Moshe, had died during that month. What Haman didn't know is that Moshe had also been born during the month of Adar. Interestingly, Moshe was born and died on the same date, Zion Adar, the seventh of Adar, which falls out every year this week, a week before Purim. How could it be that Haman knew when Moshe had died but didn't know when he was born? Perhaps it was due to a quirk in Jewish tradition. There is a tradition that the Hebrews have of hoisting the birthday boy up on a chair. Oh, so come no. over and help me celebrate Michael's birth moment. Uh, okay. One, two, three. Whoa, whoa, cat. All right. All right, watch it. Oscar, please. I'm just kidding. Not that quirk. Here's what I'm talking about. We don't emphasize, we don't make a big deal out of birthdays, unless it's a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Instead, we recognize and we note yurtzites, the dates of death. Why? Because when a baby's born, he or she hasn't done anything yet. We have to wait until that person grows up, lives a whole life, and then passes away. And then we can look back and see what they accomplished. So we don't have a Washington's birthday or a Lincoln's birthday. Instead, we note and recognize the yurtzites of our great leaders. But perhaps by de-emphasizing birthdays, we sleep on them a little too much because they do have some significance. The Torah tells us that it was on Paro, Pharaoh's birthday, that he reinstated the wine minister as Yosef, Joseph, had predicted. And on that date, on his birthday, at his birthday party, the wine minister placed Paro's goblet on the palm of Paro. And that's why to this day when we make Kiddush, we place the cup, our goblet, on our palm. Because by noting that detail, God was hinting to us, that's the way a king holds a cup. That's the regal way to hold it. And on Moshe's birth date, on the 7th of Adar, a wild phenomenon took place. The room filled with light, as our sages explain. What kind of light are they talking about? Every delivery room is filled with light because doctors are worried about personal injury attorneys like me if they make a mistake. So we're not talking about regular light. We're talking about the original light, the light of creation, the light that God hid away for the righteous in the future. So why did God bring back some of that light when baby Moshe was born? Because God knew that that baby was going to grow up, ascend Mount Sinai, and go up to heaven and bring down the light of the Torah. And there's another tradition that's not that well known. There's a tradition that you should, if it's your birthday, your Hebrew birthday, you should give blessings, give brachas out to people. And if you know somebody who's celebrating their Hebrew birthday, you should go get a bracha. Why? Because that's an auspicious day. That's a person's day of mazel, of good fortune. As one rabbi once put it, the date of your birth is the date on which God decided the world could no longer exist without you in it. And maybe there's another reason. Maybe God comes to visit each birthday boy or girl throughout their life on your birthday to check in. You've reached a milestone, a milestone that God gave to you. So maybe God checks in to see, what are you doing? Where are you holding? What are your priorities? Person had a brush with the divine on their birthday? Go get a blessing from them. And it just so happens that there's another Jew, far less famous and far less holy than Moshe, but who shares a birthday with him, the seventh day of Adar. You're looking at him right now. It's my birthday too. And right now, today, is the seventh of Adar. It's my birthday. So let me take this opportunity, this auspicious occasion for me, to give you a blessing, a bracha. May you spend less and less time worrying about and fretting over the things over which you have no control, whether or not God's going to bestow various blessings upon you. And instead, spend your time working on the things over which you do have control, your spirituality, your connection to God, your Torah study. And may you, when you ask God for things, when you pray to him formally or informally, may you only request the right things, the really important things. And may God grant your requests beyond what you even imagined. Mm -hmm.